Hi, I'm Greg, and thank you for tuning in. Our video encompasses the application of goal setting to the sport of track and field. And here we are going to take a look at our own university's track star, Connor Rennie, as he talks to Coach Eric coming off a losing season. Hey, Coach Eric, thanks for meeting me today. Connor, never a problem. How, how are things? Uh, well, they could be better, you know. Coach, I, uh, I had some higher expectations for myself uh, this previous season, but I didn't, uh, I didn't get to where I wanted to be, and I just feel like I let my team down, and I feel like I let myself down, you know? No, that's understandable, you know. You're not always going to be in the, uh, the most positive light coming off a season like that, but how did your performance kind of um, stray away from your expectations with the season? How did you place? I didn't place too well. I placed in the uh, lower half of my division and uh, I just uh, wasn't happy. I was expecting more and uh, I thought I trained harder and thought I was going to do better, but... You know what? That, that's okay. Um, this is the first step. I can 100% see you bouncing back from this, but there are some very specific steps we're going to have to take in order to ensure that you have a more positive and more successful season. Okay, are, you, are you willing to do that? I'm ready. Coach. All right. I'm ready. Let's get to work. Let's go. So with Connor coming off a losing season, Coach Eric is going to introduce the concept of goal setting. So first up, goal setting is defined as attaining a specific standard of proficiency on a task within a specific time limit. In regards to the effectiveness of goal setting in sport, the athlete needs to be taught guidelines to set effective goals and to attain them. Goals can be technical such as skills, tactical such as strategies, physical or psychological in nature. Okay, thank you Connor for coming to our first meeting. So I think the first step in increasing your performance for this upcoming season is uh, implementing goal setting into your training regimen. So we're gonna focus on short-term goals encompassing your off season. Okay. Okay, so the first type of goals that we're gonna go over are technical. Can you think of any technical goals you wanna work yeah, on? Yeah, I, really, uh, I really wanna improve my starting uh, stance on the blocks. Okay, good, so starting stance off your blocks. Yeah. Can you think of any physical goals you'd like to work on? Um, I wanna get my deadlift weight up, my clean weight up, I want to do more pull-ups and uh, for conditioning I want to do more suicides. Perfect. So we're going to work on increasing your weight in all four of those exercises yeah. and doing more suicides to increase yeah. your conditioning. So lastly, for psychological goals, I'm going to teach you how to implement imagery into your training regimen to uh, to better your performance Great. in this upcoming season. Great. Okay. Okay. Thanks, right. Coach. Let's get to work. Let's go. A research article titled The Application of Goal Setting to Sports by Edwin A. Locke and Gary P. Latham hypothesized that goal setting will work as well in sport as in business and lab tasks. Locke and Latham listed 10 specific hypotheses based on previous research. Three of these hypotheses were, number one, specific goals will regulate action more precisely than general goals. Number two, difficult goals will lead to better performance than goals of do your best or no goals at all. And number three, Goals will affect performance by directing activity, mobilizing effort, increasing persistence, and motivating the search for appropriate task strategies. So Locke and Latham suggested specific ways that goal setting can be applied to sport in the hopes that these ideas will stimulate experimental research on in sport in both lab and field settings. Some of these factors included goals for practice, team versus individual sports, goals during competition, using goals to increase self-confidence, and task difficulty versus goal difficulty. The conclusions that Locke and Latham drew were, a specific goal designates the types and amount of effort required, and it facilitates self-satisfaction by furnishing clear signs of the athlete's accomplishments. Furthermore, the best way for goals to be achieved is when the coach and athlete work together Make, to make goals. Goals must be moderately difficult combined with short and long-term goals. Okay, so let's transition back to Connor as Coach Eric introduces the concept of goal setting with hopes of improving his performance. Okay, Connor, so the last goal we're gonna work on is imagery. So what I want you to do is I want you to close your eyes, okay? I want you to picture yourself on the starting blocks. Who's around you? I want you to envision your other competitors and I want you to envision the starting guy with the sound of the gun as the race begins. I want you going through all your motions. You're breathing in and out as you run down that track. 
I want you to envision yourself in first place throughout the entire race, pushing, giving it all you have, all the way to the very end. And finally, I want you to envision you winning the race and all the emotions that are gonna overcome you as you win and as you get that medal. Okay, now that the off season is over, Coach Eric is going to sit down with Connor and come up with long-term goals that will carry over into the off season. Okay, so congratulations, the off season is on. How do you feel? Oh, I feel fantastic, Coach. Way better than I did before I came in here. Good, okay, so let's talk about, did you meet your goals? I did. I met my deadlift goals, I met my clean goals, I met my pull-up goals, I met my uh, suicide yeah, goals. Yeah. So, you know what, fantastic. just by talking to you, I can already tell how much your self-confidence has increased. I feel great. I think, I think we're ready to uh, go over some more long-term goals for the season. What do you think? All right, let's do it. Okay, so what would be a long-term goal? Would it be winning the CIS championship this season? I think that would be a good long-term goal. I think um, winning it, for the years to come would be uh, okay. good long. So we're gonna focus on winning the CIS championship this year. Yeah. You ready to put in some more work? Let's go. Let's go. Okay, so a research article titled Problems with Goal Setting, Research in Sports and Their Solution by Edwin A. Locke researched that errors in methodology have been made in research articles regarding goal setting and came up with suggested antidotes. The first three flaws that Locke found were number one, Manipulation of failure of do your best condition. Okay, so number two, measure personal goals. This means that to know how a person will perform, it is imperative to know what personal goal each person sets in response to the goal that was assigned to them. The goal theory asserts that assigned goals affect performance through their effects on personal goals. So are you gonna attribute your, uh, your performance today to goal setting? Yes, goal setting had to be a very large factor in my win today, but uh, yeah, I you know I've been training hard, I've been using imagery, I've been doing everything Coach Eric's told me to do, and can't thank him enough. Oh. Okay, so number three, make specific goals difficult. What this means is the goal theory does not claim specific goals as such lead to better performance than do your best goals. Okay, so Locke findings found that many disappointing results regarding goal setting studies can be attributed to methodological flaws. Locke noted that no technique can work unless applied appropriately. Thank you for tuning in and educating yourselves on the importance of goal setting and how proper implementation can increase performance in sport. See you later, Windsorites.